Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Personas. Today, let's dive into the browser inside of Studio One. All right, in the last video, I kind of spilled the beans on the browser a little bit, just because I'm excited. It's a really cool feature. Uh, if you look over here on the right-hand side, we click Browse, we press F7 to pull up this browser window. Now, 95% of the time, when my browser window is open, I'm looking at this Effects tab. If we pull it out all the way, we can see we've got an Instruments tab, Effects, Loops, Files, Cloud, Shop, and pool okay uh the pool i use occasionally files i use occasionally instruments sometimes because i'm mostly not a midi guy effects is my home base now one thing people talk about is how the fonts are fairly small that's true but i've actually found this allows me to see a lot of my most of my plugins if not all of them actually in one view without having to do a bunch of scrolling now i admittedly don't have a lot of third-party plugins in here, uh, but it does organize them by manufacturer. You can change that. So I've got all my Personas plugins, which I use the most, and then a few extras here that I can always expand. Great feature up here. Uh, you can save effects chains, which is a collection of plugins, mix effects, which is the console shaper, which I'll talk about in another video. Um, but the favorite section is super handy. These are kind of the plugins I find myself reaching for a lot. I don't really reach for the analog delay too much. I could always remove that by unfavoriting it. Binaural Pan, Pro EQ, Red Light Distortion. Actually, Mix Tool I don't use as much anymore now that they've added some other features. Anyway, they're right there. So if we wanted to really just keep it minimal, we could just have those there and then expand this when we need it. This is the normal view that I use. Favorite plugins up here. I grab that fat channel whenever I need it, drag it onto a track. Uh, if I want to find other plugins, I can do that as well. Now, if I've got a plugin like the Room Reverb, and I know, you know what I really want is that Plate Reverb, I can click on the little arrow next to Room Reverb, and I can scroll through all the presets that are already here. So this will, in essence, do two things. It will put the plugin on the track and also load the preset, as opposed to me having to load the plugin and then go through the menu and load the preset. It's all right here. It's, it's not like it's a huge extra amount of work, but it's nice to just go through and say, yes, I want this flat plate. And as I mentioned in the last video, I can drag that flat plate onto the send section of, let's say, this plugin right here, this channel right here, and it will create, here's the plugin that it just created. It created, not plugin, it created this effects channel, has the, f the room reverb on there, has the, let's see, it's this one, the flat plate preset that we wanted, and it already created a send on this channel that we can then turn up and down and pan left and right to send that to that reverb. Super handy, really cool way of working. Uh, so drag and drop. I remember, I've, I've said this before, I worked at Sweetwater as a sales engineer back when Personas first announced Studio One, the original first version. And their big selling feature was this drag and drop. And I remember thinking, oh, that's silly, drag and drop. That's what like, you know, kids do. Professionals like us don't use drag and drop. We like to do things like this. Click, scroll, scroll, mm, click, click, click. Like that was my existence with plugins before. It was just par for the course. I would go through and I would click the plus sign and then I would go and find the folder and then I would go find the plugin. And if you had a lot of plugins, this became really hard. Now there was still a favorite section in some of those. I don't even think you could type in the plugin like you can in Studio One. So it was just, it was, you know, it was just not as simple as, oh, they're right there. Wah boom, I just oh, drag the wrong thing. I drag it around a track and it's there. Other great thing is if it's an instrument, I don't have to create an instrument track first. I can say, I want Impact, which is our drum programmer, with this setting, this preset. I'm just going to drag it to an empty section in the mixer or in the arrange window, and look. Two seconds later, boom. It created a track. It pulled up the preset, <laughs> and it blew out our eardrums because it's really loud. Um, that's how quickly you can do things like that. Super, super cool. Um, so whether you're doing instruments or effects, the process is pretty similar. Find what you want, drag it into the section. Now you can do things like uh, click on this little sucker right here, which will give you some icons for the plugins if you'd like to see them more visually. It's cool. It looks neat. I don't like it as much because it means I have to scroll more to find what I'm looking for. And I'm just used to knowing I want Pro EQ. It's in alphabetical order. It's right there under P. Or I want it up here because it's I've got it set up as my one of my favorites, okay? Uh, a couple other sections to the browser that you should know and probably mess around with. A lot of this is in the manual. Um, the pool, this is just where all the files are for this particular session. 
that's really all I have to tell you about that. Files is where uh, you can do things like go search your hard drive for a particular file that you want to bring into the session. Uh, it's where you can do things like uh, right click on a couple of files and convert them from mono to stereo. If they're if it's two like a, a left and a right file inside this section here, you can convert it to a single stereo file before importing into Studio One. I've done a video on that. You can check that out. Also, this is where you could export your tracks. Now, Studio One, you may have seen this already. Up in the top left-hand side under the song menu, we can use export stems. And it will say, I'm going to basically bounce out each channel um, as, a, as a stem that you can then send off to be mixed. And that's great and well and good, especially if you have plugins that you need to render or if it's instruments and things like that. But if you have a bunch of audio tracks, you can actually use the range tool, come in and just select everything and then watch this, click and drag it over here, and I can drop these into any folder that I want, and it'll just drop a WAV file for each one of those. If I press Command, you can see it switches between just render the WAV file or render the WAV file with rendered effects. And if I let go, it's gonna start rendering those individual WAV files and sticking them into that folder. That's a feature that not many people know about and it is super handy. So if I'm about to mix something or send this off to be mixed or send it off for someone to track some drums to my tracks and I just want to give them multi-tracks, this is actually to me a faster way than going through the whole export stems process because it just goes bam right there. Now here's where it gets cooler. Obviously I can browse through the files on my computer, but I can also have these little shortcut tabs up here, these roots as they call them. And one of those is my client Dropbox folder. So this is where I put files to send and receive from clients. Let's say I wanna send my buddy Ben Holmes these files, I want him to have the multi-tracks, I want him to play drums along to it and send it back to me. Pretty normal workflow. Well I right click on this, on his name, and I go to new folder drums for Ben. Okay, creates a new folder that's created in my Dropbox. Now I come over here, I select all these like I did with the range tool, click on it, drag it into drums for Ben. Let's say, let's render it with the rendered effects because I've got some cool EQs on there or something. Boom. It's going to start to export those. Then I can just go ahead while that's exporting, I can come over to Finder. I can open up my client Dropbox folder, which is right here. I can go find the Ben Holmes folder. Oh look, drums for Ben. It's throwing WAV files in there. As you can see, it's still working. But I can go ahead and right click this, copy the Dropbox link, and I can go create an email to Ben that says, hey man, I'm uploading those now, here's the link. And I can go to lunch, and it, this will take another you know, few minutes, five, six minutes, 10 minutes or so, to render those, and then as soon as they're rendered, they will show up in that folder automatically going to Ben, because he's got the link to the folder itself. That is a cool and fun way to work, and something that Studio One lets me do surprisingly well. All right, that's it for this video. If this was helpful for you, please be sure to hit the like button, and also subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss future helpful videos as they come out. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.